Hi, I'm Colleen, and these are all the things I'm going to do in May. Hi, I'm Colleen Delaney, and if you're new to my channel, I talk about books and writing. And instead of making a traditional TBR video for the month of May, this is more like my TBR, the books I want to buy, the things I need to edit and write, some crafting I'm going to get done. So it's really like my to be done more than just my to be read video. Before we start, if you are interested in following along in my reading and writing journey more thoroughly than these videos, you can sign up for my newsletter. There's a link in the description. It comes with a free copy of my novella, The Force Witch, which is a spicy paranormal romance. And I only send you something like once a month. So I'm not going to bombard you with emails. Moving on. So the month of May is always kind of a weird month for me because my birthday is the first week of May and I love buying myself a lot of presents for my birthday. I'm like a Taurus through and through and if you're like into astrology, you know we like our creature comforts and we like to sort of pamper ourselves. And I pamper myself a lot by buying books. So I don't have a lot of the books I'm gonna read in May because on my birthday I'm planning to go to four bookstores. We'll see if I end up going to four. And just like going crazy. I also have a very full Amazon cart that I'll show you of books I don't think I'd be able to find in stores. So there's a lot of stuff that I want to read in May that I probably don't have in my possession yet. But I'll start by telling you the books I do have in my possession and I'm putting on my TBR. I don't know if I'll actually read. I know I'll read some of these. I don't think I'll read all of them just because when I have all my shiny new birthday books, they're probably going to take precedent. One book I know I will read in May is Grimm and Barrett by Juliet Cross. It is the sixth book in the Stay a Spell series about the Savoy sisters who are witches living in New Orleans. This comes out, I think, on May 8th, and I want a hard copy of it. I've got all the other ones right up here, you can see. So I want the hard copy to match, and um, so I know it'll come, you know, probably around like May 15th or something like that. But as soon as I get it, I'll start reading it. This is the last book in the series. I'm kind of sad about that. It's always a little bittersweet when a series you love ends. But I've been really waiting for Clara and Henry's story because they are a friends to lovers story, which is ah, super exciting. Also, Clara is very sunshine. Henry's not necessarily like grumpy, but he is a grim and they are pretty grim. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this. If you've ever read any of Juliet Cross's other series, and want to recommend one to me to read next, because I know I'm going to go through Juliet Cross Withdrawal, I'll please put it in the comments, because I'd love to know what other of her series are like. Can't put downable. Next, I know I'm going to read this book too, because I got approved for an arc for Mickey Chambers' Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed. I love Cherish Reed. Um, if you've been watching my videos since I started this channel, what was that, like 18 months ago, you know I really like Cherish Reed's books. She writes um, contemporary romance and sometimes paranormal. This is a contemporary romance. This is about Mickey, who's an adjunct professor, and she needs some extra cash. And as someone who works not in academia, but in education for a long time, I get that feeling. So she gets a part-time job as a bartender, even though she doesn't know how to tend bar, and is working for a man named Diego, who is very stressed out, and he is a widower, and he's trying not to run his deceased wife's bar into the ground. And Mickey just has this like sunny personality and then a ton of ideas to go with it that help stir business up. The two of them obviously are gonna to start to like each other, but they have to keep things professional, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how long they can keep things professional. <laughs> this will be really fun. This is like a perfect, in my opinion, reading like a cherished read novel. It's like a perfect May read. Get yourself ready for an easy breezy summer with some good, happy romance. Okay, in like two hours before I started filming this, I got approved for um, the arc for Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert, which is the next book in the Dark Olympus series. I think we're on number five. And I was trying to figure out a way to pitch this book to you without spoiling number four, which is gonna be difficult, um, but, this is about Aphrodite and Hephaestus. And if you are familiar with the series, their names are like positions in the city. So this isn't really a fantasy romance. It's more like a mafia romance. So there's like a lot of crime and like shady politics going on. Aphrodite and Hephaestus are going to be an enemies to lovers story. And I can't wait to see how Katie Roberts, how Katie Robert does this because the ending of book four was insane. And when I saw that they were gonna be the couple in book five, I was like, how? But I know she'll be able to do it. And so I can't wait to read that one too. I also got an arc for Wolfborn by Celia Hart. Here's the cover. I don't know much about this book. 
I know that the hero is an alpha wolf and the heroine, it said something in the description like, killed her wolf before she got a chance to get to know it. So I'm not exactly sure what happened in her past. It's gonna come to light. If you stick around to throughout my video, you'll understand why I'm reading this book. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say for now. You gotta stick around to see the rest. All right, my only physical book that I have right now that's on my TBR is The New Life by Tom Cruise. And if you can see, I'm actually almost halfway done with it. I'm on a page 145. So I'm gonna say this, like what I'm gonna say next is meant to be like the highest compliment. This book reads like it was written in the late 1800s, which is when it takes place. In so much as that it already sort of feels like a classic when you read it, like the language is extremely visceral and almost like poetic when you read it. But because of that, it is kind of a slower read. I'm not skimming at all. Sometimes when I read a thriller, I skim a bit, my brain can like really input the information fast. It's not doing it with this. So I'm taking my time reading it and enjoying it. It's definitely couldn't have been written in the 1800s because it goes a lot into like sexual nature and sex in general, but it is about a pair of men, one who is married and has daughters that are in, I think they're like they're in their 20s, and he's gay, and he wants to write a book about why it shouldn't be illegal to be gay. And then he also has a lover, love interest, who obviously he's not married to. And then the other man, Henry, is newly married, but has kind of a different outlook on the world, marriage, and he's married to a woman that at this point, I am pretty sure she is gay, and I am thinking he might be gay, he might be bisexual, you can't really tell at this point in the book. But um, it's definitely interesting. The only thing that's kind of holding me back, I think from like trying to tear through this book is I think the ending is gonna be really sad. And maybe I'm wrong, it might not be. But you know, it's not a romance. So I feel like a little worried if it's got a realistic ending for these characters, cause it'll be very sad. Okay, book of the month I do not think will come out with their picks before I wanna edit and put this video up. If it does, I'll spice it in right here. Um, if it doesn't, I am probably gonna buy myself three books this month because I think I get a free book for my birthday and I have a lot of credits. And so I'm just gonna let myself go wild. Here are some of the books I hope they pick for book of the month. First, I really hope they pick Atalanta by Jennifer Saint because I love Jennifer Saint. Uh, she wrote um, Electra and Ariadne, both of which are like down here on my shelf. And I really, really like her take on mythology retellings. I think Atalanta is a wonderful character who will be really fun to follow along. Next, if they don't pick that one, because I don't think they'll pick both of these, I'd love it if they picked uh, Clytemnestra by, what is her name? Casta Casati, I think. Um, so I'm kind of in like my own mythology retelling obsession right now. I think the peak was a few years ago in terms of publication, them coming out, but I went through like a big mythology retelling phase from like 2006 to 2010 uh, when I was working with kids books all the time and young adult, there was, when The Lightning Thief came out, a ton of other mythology retellings came out for kids and young adults. None of them were as popular, but I read a lot of them. So I was a little bit like, oh, I'm good with mythology retellings, but now I'm definitely getting back into it. And I'm, I really want to read both these books. Clytemnestra is the wife of Agamemnon. I think she's a great tragic heroine in Greek mythology. And then lastly, the book No Two Persons by Erica Bauermeister, I believe. This is a book about an author who writes a book and then I think it's nine people read it and you get to see how the book affects them. And that sounded like so much fun. So I hope they pick at least one of those. If not, I'm sure they'll have some great picks and I'll pick some stuff out. Okay, so now I'm gonna read you my Amazon wish list. <laughs> or not my Amazon wish list. this is my Amazon cart. So these are things that I really wanna get for my birthday that I don't think I'll be able to find in stores. So like two days before my birthday, I'll order them. The first is the Tarot of the Witch's Garden, which is a tarot card deck. I love tarot cards. I usually get myself one deck for my birthday and then one deck for Christmas, maybe two. Some years, two. This year, two. <laughs> but here's a picture. It's I'm like really into like astrology stuff and all that jazz. And I am like super an earth sign, like through and through. And this has huge earth sign energy for me. Second in my cart, I have this Scott of mine, which is book four in the Rogue Files by Sophie Jordan. I have been reading this series crazy. So I read the seventh book first. I got an arc for it and I didn't know that it was a series. Well, I knew it was a series, but I was like, 
Well, just sometimes it's nice to read an arc as a standalone, like read a book in a series as a standalone. So I got that one and then I liked it. So then I went back and I read one through three and I loved them all. And then I bought five thinking it was four and I just read that last month. And then I was like, I should probably read four and then I read six. And I'm going to buy it on Amazon because I was afraid if I went to like Barnes and Noble, which is where I've been getting these, that I'd accidentally buy six. I just want to read four next. So this got of mine, I love Sophie Jordan. Also, the best part of this is when I looked her up Sophie Jordan, she has another book coming out this year, which I'm so excited about, in her Duke Hunt series, which I've just been raving about the last two years. Next, I put Blood Orange by Karina Holly in my cart. And I think I saw a YouTuber recommend this, someone on BookTube, but I can't remember who. I think it's a vampire romance. I am probably gonna reread the synopsis before I purchase this. But I've been wanting to read more like paranormally type romance. I'm mainly a historical, not mainly, but I really do like historical romance probably the most, but I really like paranormal too. So I've been trying to like put a little more in my reading list. And then lastly, I have An English Bride in Scotland, which is the first book in the Highland Bride series by Lindsay Sands. Okay. If you're on Twitter, specifically Romance Landia, which is like the romance cor corner of Twitter, which is where I hang out on Twitter, this series is having like a crazy renaissance. Everybody's talking about that it's like bonkers historical romance and everyone's reading it. There's like 11 books in the series. A lot of my writer friends are like, have been binging the series. So I was like, well, I want to play along too. So I'm going to get the first one. Um, and yeah, I have a bunch of stuff on my Kindle right now, so I don't want to get it on my Kindle. I want to get actually a physical copy of it and then we'll see how much I like it if I want to get physical copies for the rest of them. Okay. So that's everything in my Amazon cart. Now, when I purchase books for myself for my birthday or for anything, I have this like running list of books I want. And some of them are books I don't know if I'll ever even find in a store, but here's my list. It's insanely long. Buckle up. First up, I have Life in Five Senses by Gretchen Rubin. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna buy this book. Um, it is a nonfiction book about like being living in the world and not in your head, which is something I'm very interested in. It's also pretty short. And because I'm not like a huge nonfiction reader, this one really like caught my attention. I think I'll definitely try to find it. I also know that my local bookstore has it because I follow them on Instagram and they posted a picture of it when, on its release day. So I'll probably buy it from them. Next, I have Homecoming from Kate Morton. I'm kind of conflicted over whether or not I'm going to buy this because I still have The Distant Hours by Kate Morton, which I haven't read yet. And I kind of want to read that before I buy another Kate Morton books. Her books are long and they're big undertakings. So I don't just like pick one up because, and I do really love her books, but I did see this one at Target and it's very, very thick. I feel like I need to read The Distant Hours first, but if I'm like shopping and like can't find any of the books I want, I'm going to buy it because I'm going to want to buy myself stuff. Next, I have Age of Swords by Michael Sullivan. That is the second book in the Legends of the First Empire series. So Age of Myth was book one. I really liked Age of Myth a lot, so I want to continue reading the series. I feel like I'll be able to find that one either at Half Price Books or at Barnes & Noble. Next is The Last Heir to the Blackwood Library by Hester Fox. I don't remember what this is about, and sometimes I just put books on this list, and then if I find them, I can read the description and decide whether or not I want to buy them. I have Pa de Don't by Chloe... Angle Yell, I think is how you say it. That's a contemporary romance with a ballet theme. And since I used to be a dancer, I do like reading about dance. And I feel like I have never read a romance where both characters were dancers. I wrote a romance in which the heroine was a dancer called Dance For Me when I was writing under Lucy Hudson. Next, I have Warriors, Witches, Women by Kate Hodge. This is like a mythology nonfiction that I will buy used if I find it. The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. Two of my friends who I have a book club with both read this and loved it. I saw it at the library. I read the description. It sounded good, but not like something that would grab me. And I feel like for me, if I'm going to get a book out of the library, I need to like read it immediately or else I'll have it checked out forever. Case in point, I have two books that I've had out since the beginning of March that I really need to return. But... If I can find it, especially like at half price books, I'll definitely pick it up. Then I wrote down Bernard Cornwell's books that The Last Kingdom was based on. Um, I don't know if you watched the TV show The Last Kingdom, but it just finally ended with a movie. It was five seasons and then a movie. And I loved that show so much that I'm considering reading the books. We'll see. If I do, I'll probably read like the first couple pages in the store to make sure I like the tone and like the pacing of the writing before I commit. I think it's like 10 books long. Next, I have How to Think Like a Woman by Reagan. I think it's Pena Luna. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So this was on my most anticipated reads of the year. 
And it came out, I think, in March, but I've heard nothing about it and has very few reviews. So now I'm kind of like, mm, I want to see it before I purchase it. So if I can find it at a bookstore and I can read a couple pages, I might get it. Next, I just have books by Sarah Addison Allen. Um, so I read Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen a long time ago, like I think like 12 years ago, because I remember recommending it to someone who I had just met and then she and I ended up becoming really good friends. And then after we became really good friends, I was like, you'd really love that book because she's very witchy and also an amazing cook. And then this past summer I read Other Birds, or I think maybe in like September, and I love that book so much. And she's a bunch of other stuff I haven't read. So I'll see if Half Price Books has any of her backlist and grab one, or maybe one of the bookstores I go to. Next I have The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O, and I don't actually remember what that's about, but that's a really good title. Then I have Any Books by Kate Canterbury. Um, I've read one book by her, Hard Pressed, and I loved it. I read it fall 2021, and I got it in like a bundle that a bunch of authors put fallish books together, and then you could buy like 18 books for $5 or whatever. And I think I only read like two because obviously, you know, I'm not the pers kind of person who's going to read 18 romances about fall in one month. But I really like this one a lot. And then I just forgot about her as an author. So I'm going to see, I know she has that one in a jam that's like really popular. I'm going to see if um, any of the bookstores I go to have any of hers. Next, I have Gothicana by Rue Nix. And I know this is like a dark academia. I think there's a vampire romance. I don't think I'm going to buy that now. I think I might save that for like September when I'm in like my dark academia mood. <laughs> so then I recently watched this uh, booktube video that the booktuber Emmy, who has, she's like a big booktuber. She put it out. I don't remember when it was last week, question mark. And it was about wa her wanting to read a book from every country. I'll link it in the description. And it was very interesting for me to watch because she reminded me very much of myself like 20 years ago, which is a weird feeling for someone who's coming up on their 40th birthday that a full grown adult is reminding me of myself 20 years ago. But um, I think she's majoring in world literature in, at her university and I majored in English literature at my university. It was just like bringing me back. And there, there were a lot of good books that she recommended and a lot of good books that were recommended in the comments. So here are some of the ones I took away from it. The author Tova Jansen, who's a Finnish author, both the book, the summer book, and the series, The Moomins, which looks like a kid's series that I think my family, we'd like really enjoy reading as a family. So I'm going to look for some of those. The book Lost Birds by Beirut Putrius, who's a Lithuanian author. This one, actually, I just Googled books written by Lithuanian authors because I was thinking about like all the countries in Europe I haven't read authors from because I've read from a lot. And that was one. And it's about um, a group of children who were uh, evacuated from Lithuania during World War II to Chicago. And I live close to Chicago and I lived in Chicago for like 12 years. And um, that sounded like a good historical fiction that I'd be interested in. And then The Year of the Hair by Arto Pasolina, Pasolina, who's also a Finnish author. And that's about a man who hits a rabbit with his car and then like decides to go live in the woods. And then Snow Country by uh, Yasunari Kawabata, who's a Japanese author. And I can't remember what that one is about, but when she described it, I was like, that sounds like something I'd really like. Now let's move on to some big like coffee table type books that I would like, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find these. The first is The History of Terror Art by Esther Joy Archer and Holly Adams Easley. I've been meaning to buy this for a year now. Um, they are the, the authors are the um, voices. I don't know what you call it. The creators of the of Wildly Tarot podcast, which is probably my favorite podcast. They just talk about tarot cards constantly and they're like hilarious they also talk about romance novels a lot and they wrote a book about the art on tarot cards very interesting and then the next book is called slow living the secrets to slowing down and noticing the simple joys everywhere by helena woods which just sounded like something i would enjoy i love like the concept of huga i love pretty coffee table books and then last is leaves roots and fruits by nicole john z burke and that is a book about having a kitchen garden which i have like a very small kitchen garden that ends up being like last year I got a thousand tomatoes and the year before I got like 50 zucchini, but I can't really ever figure out how to get like a normal, consistent harvest of anything. Like two years ago I got five tomatoes, so who knows? Maybe this will help. All right, my last collection of books, I have four children's books that I'm on the, out of, on the prowl for. If You Go Down the Woods Today by Rachel Piercy, Lena and the Lord of Toadstools, I don't have the author down, 
The Queen in the Cave by Julia Sarda, but there are accents on Julia and Sarda, so I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, and Mushroom Rain by Laura Zimmerman. So I am a children's librarian. I've come to notice that while I started my career as a children's librarian, really focused in both young adult and middle grade, that I am now through and through a picture book librarian. Those are the kids' books that I just gravitate towards and want to consume. So these aren't necessarily even for my children. They're books that I would like us to have as a family with beautiful illustrations. And I'm such a sucker for like a nature-based picture book. I just am, as you can tell by the titles of all of those. So that is my enormous book list. Now let's move into what I have to do in May. I have a book coming out in June, which is very exciting. This is my official YouTube announcement. I did announce it on Twitter already. Um, it is this book right here. Here's my cover, Finding His Mate. And it's book one in The Wolves of Leuven. And you can tell by the cover, I hope, what kind of book this is, right? Right? Okay. I sort of stink at pitching my own books, but here goes. Our heroine is Tella, and the book opens, and she's escaping from dragon ter territory, where she's been a prisoner for like the last four years, and she's been kept by a dragon as a pet. You'll learn what that means as you read the book. She has heard terrible things about wolf territory, but she knows that it's close, and she thinks if she can get there, She'll have a better life than she's been having in dragon territory. They've been basically never feeding her. And all the rumors say that the wolves only want human women to sort of breed with. So she thinks, well, if I need to be able to give them offspring, I will have to be fed. And she thinks that's the lesser of two evils. When she gets over the wall between the territories and is immediately saved by someone, she starts to think that everything that she's heard about wolf territory has been a lie. Now, when Epsilon finds his mate broken and half starved on the other side of the wall, he must hand her over to be healed and to become initiated into the pack, which might tear him apart because every new pack member has to go through a ritual in which they give themselves to the alpha, a title that Epsilon does not currently hold. While he battles over giving his mate to another, Tella has to learn whether or not she'll ever be able to love a monster. So that's it, okay. So I'm gonna put a pre-order link in the description if that sounds like something you're interested in. If you are someone who likes to uh, review ARCs, advanced reader copies, or if you're interested in knowing what that is, sign up for my newsletter because I will have a way to sort of request to be one of my ARC readers in there in the first week of June. May is gonna be really dominated by this. So I get my final edits back from my editor on May 12th, and then I will dive into getting my ARCs ready, which will come out the first week of June. I am also currently working on my third or fourth draft of book two in that series, because it's gonna come out in early autumn. So it's gonna be all wolf shifters all the time over here, and obviously a lot of reading too. And now you know why my romance novels are getting a little bit more paranormal, because I'm kind of in a paranormal mood. I'm writing i would classify this book as more of like a fantasy romance because it does not take place firmly rooted in our world which is how most paranormals are but there are wolf shifters which do kind of go in the paranormal umbrella beyond books and writing one of my good friends and i decided that we're going to start weaving <laughs> together like the craft weaving um i have always been a knitter but my carpal tunnel has gotten so bad probably because i'm writing a ton editing a ton and it's just, I'm getting older. And so I really want to have a new fiber craft that I can do that is maybe not going to be so hard on my hands. So weaving sounded like a good one. I bought myself a loom. Hold on, let me get it. This is my loom. I probably should have started with a smaller one, but you know, I figured it'd be cool because I could make placemats with it. I already have a ton of yarn. I do need some more supplies for my loom, like a shuttle and warp string which i didn't realize i needed so random stuff like that which i will buy for myself on my birthday because half price books is right next door to michael's and there's a joanne's down the block if michael's doesn't have it so depending on how weaving goes you might start to see some weaving books in my wrap up if i get real into it i don't know we'll see how it goes we'll see <laughs> i love may obviously it's my birthday month but it also just is like that month that like gears me ready for summer and i just really love the summer i love my kids not being in school i love hanging out in our yard reading all day i think it's like the best time of year and the sun on my face and a book in my lap. If you've made it this far in the video, please give me a tulip or your favorite flower emoji in the comments. And thank you for hanging out for so long. 
I hope you are in the middle of a good book, about to start reading a good book, or about to start writing a great book. I'll see you soon. Thank you.